Welcome to Resilient Love Podcast. Join hosts Quentin and Brianna as they discuss tips on love, life, and business. Let's get into this next episode. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. We are back with another episode of Resilient Resilient Love. Love. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Another day, another podcast. How are you feeling, Q? I'm feeling good. Uh, A little tired. Um, This recording is coming to you guys (laughs) immediately. Like, immediately after a fun field weekend. Um, yeah. We mentioned to you guys in the last episode what our like shout outs, highlights. That's like our new segment, shout out highlight. So this week's shout out highlight for me is being able to go to Atlanta, Georgia for the BCI conference, the Black Christian Influencers Conference. What is your shout out highlight? Um, I would say the same thing, just um, the only the only difference is just the wording. But again, the BCI conference uh, being in Atlanta, Georgia, and um, just being in the room with so much influence. You know, we were at a influencers conference. So quite naturally, we were in the room with quite a bit of influence. For sure. So, you know, I guess I'm just at a place of trying to bask it all in. Yes, it was such a, it was a big, it was a big deal. Yeah. It was a big deal. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah. Just to be able to meet certain people. Meet certain people. Um, get some totally different perspectives than what we're used to mm-hmm. and uh, not being around gatekeepers. Uh-oh. We're going to get into that in this episode. Yes. But before we get into the full episode, we are going to give you, we are going to give you our quote of the day. We love to go ahead and start our episodes with a quote. And actually, Quentin has the quote, so he's going to share with you guys what our quote of the day is. Um, We actually heard it during the conference. So this is big. So the quote of the day is, it's a little bit different than our usual quotes, Mm -hmm. but just hear us out. Hear us out. Because we we had to kind of get context behind it, but we'll give very brief uh, context. But the quote is by Pluto. Those who refuse to engage in politics will be led by their inferiors. Mm-hmm. Let me read it one more time. Yeah, go ahead. Because it's a powerful. Those who refuse to engage in politics will be led by their inferiors. Mm-hmm. So we heard this during one of the sessions at the conference. One of the panels. And it was said by Garrison, Mr. Garrison, and uh, it the topic was about having social change. Mm-hmm. And so as influencers, as Christian influencers, we are charged to have to be the to be the light and the salt of the earth. So we are charged to be that change agent. So even though Pluto's context was talking about like government in a sense, we also have to use our influence, our authority in various sectors. Because politics is in everything relatively. Yes. Now that, that, woo. And the fact that if you go back biblically, mm-hmm. there were politics. Oh, uh, yeah. So yeah. it's, we have, it, it's a must. It's everywhere. You can't shake it. You know, so when people say I don't do politics, you basically are saying I don't do life. Yep. Because it was a political decision for the makeup 
yeah. brands and the actual materials used to create the makeup. It was a political decision for the type of cars that we have access to in this country. Or the fuel, you know. And the fuel, right. There's just certain commodities. Yeah. The commodities of our lifestyles are ruled and governed by politics. Mm -hmm. Such as your gas, your toilet paper. I mean, things you just... You Y'all remember what happened in the pandemic? Right. <laughs> so you naturally use these things, but you get so used to it. It's kind of like a book I'm reading now, which is Atomic Habit. Yes. An atomic habit, when it's a, an atomic habit is created, it's natural. You don't even mm -hmm. think about it. It's like second nature. You just do it. You know, when you walk in the house, you know you need light. You flip the switch. It's, That's right. It's an atomic habit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we are going to be hitting some of those points as we talk about the conference. But that is our quote of the day. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to get straight into the conference. So first of all, when we start this episode, we share with you guys that our shout out highlight was being in Atlanta, Georgia. So being in Atlanta, this conference, the Black Christian Influencers Conference, took place in Austell, Georgia at the Riverside Epicenter. And a little bit of background on the Black Christian Influencers Movement. It is set up and like the founder, CEO, is a woman by the name of Jackie. Uh, I call her Jackie H, um, but you can find her on social media as well. She's a former educator and she just brings a wealth of experience to the industry. She is what we like to call a connector. She's all about relationships, helping you to get brand deals, helping you to build your brand God's way. And so her, her whole mission is to help black Christian influencers literally just impact the space in a major way. Um, and so she decided this year, 2024, to bring everyone she has worked with and others together under one space, under this great umbrella called black Christian influencers. So as soon as you walk through the door, you felt just this, open atmosphere of just creativity. I mean, just from the way she structured the um, the carpet, if you will, the backdrop, mm -hmm. the way she structured the, the displays, marketing. the yeah. marketing. Uh, Quentin and I signed up for VIP. And so we did have a few extra goodies. Swag bag. Swag bag. And so overall, it was just an open atmosphere when we walked through the door. Yeah, and with that being said, um, this this conference was panel style mm -hmm. for the um, pretty much the whole duration of the conference, which was really good. I think um, me just being transparent, I wasn't as used to panel style. I was used to um, more uh, instructional, like classroom style when it came to conferences. So I had to open my mind to a different style and mode of learning. So I would just also say that to our audience today, like be open to a different style of learning yes. or, or be open uh, to how you receive your information, the, that the information is still gems being dropped. Don't miss them because you can't adapt to the room. Mm, yeah, that's good. So, um, you know, moving on to the next thing, like I said, we were it was panel style and there's just a few people we would like to highlight. We don't have time to really highlight them all, even though they were really good. Mm -hmm. um, and I we may even come back later on and come pull out some points. Yes. But one of the one the first uh, panels was phenomenal. Day one. Um young lady by the name of Brenda Palmer uh, mm -hmm. from LA. She said a very powerful statement and it stuck with me. And that's why I send these notes. <laughs> so she said, don't follow trends, set them. Yeah. 
don't follow trends, set them because we get so caught up in following trends, trying to meet that requirement of the algorithm that we lose our authentic self in a way. Yes. And we lose the voice on the inside of us, Mm -hmm. the personal influence that we have, and we turn it into meta influence. (laughs) So, yes. so that was very key. Um, I think Brenda was pretty good. Yes, I, I definitely enjoyed seeing her, speaking with her. I mean, it was a hey girl, hey, but I really just enjoyed being around her and just taking in her perspective on some of the questions. And you follow her prior, right? Uh, yes, I follow her prior. So a lot of people that were on the panel were already in my like follower list, like I followed them, right. but for Quentin, it was like, Oh, you follow him, Brown? You follow? So it was kind of funny, um, just bringing up those different individuals. Uh, another thing we wanted to highlight is what this uh other panelist said by the name of Norris Johnson, and it was the question was, How did you find your style and rhythm? and it and the response was. Um, you're not a content creator. You're not just a content creator. You are a messenger. The wind couldn't catch because your anointed weight is heavy. Safeguard them and then the spotlight will be on you. So just kind of keep yourself safeguarded in the word and in prayer. But we really have to be mindful as influencers, Christian influencers in variety of spaces, right? You, whether you're in your classroom, the courtroom, whether you're in the office space or the marketplace, you have to be mindful of the anointing that is on you in that area. Your anointed thing is the thing that you just flow with. That's the Mm -hmm. gift God has given you. It wasn't about the schooling. It wasn't about, it wasn't about a degree. It wasn't about a certification. God just, it just, it's on you. And it failed. It was just in you. But then you have those things where it's like a skill. And we kind of hit that in day two, honestly, where one of the panelists, she broke it down. Her name is Ashley. Um, She broke it down how, you know, you have your God-given gifts and then you have skills. And skills are what you really have to go and learn and figure out. But the gift, it really just flows. But you can't cultivate the gift to make it better. But that, that's kind of how she helped us to decipher the God-given gift and then the skill set. Um, but Norris Johnson, going back to day one, Norris Johnson just given that quote, and I'm going to say it one more time before we move on. The quote again was, you are not just a content creator. You are a messenger. And I hope that that phrase, along with the one from Palmer, Miss Palmer, really helps you guys that are listening to us uh, today because we want to edify you as we were edified. We want to edify you with the quotes that we heard uh, from the conference. Absolutely. So, um, did you want to do one more? Yeah, my husband. (laughs) He's like, uh, yeah, let's hit one more with Brian LaFrance. So, he his question was how does an influencer evolve over time while remaining relevant and his response was don't live on the perception of other people only god being uh that sharing your real world real life outside of the stage and in this case the stage is social media so just really being your authentic self and honestly just flowing like not getting caught up in the algorithm like Quentin said earlier, but being authentic to who you are. I feel like that was a reoccurring theme um, that was in the conference, just kind of hearing, be yourself, be yourself, be who God called you to be and flow in that. And being that, I that was good. And we only had one more panelist on this one. So I got to put this in here. Go ahead, quick. throw it in. So I want to give credit to everyone. I try to do my best, you know, Sometimes we could be a little churchy. We don't want to miss nobody. But um, I like what Adara, uh, Adara Sharon, I think I got it right, said. And basically it was, don't tweak your content to fit media. Create from your values, what's important to you, and in the eyes of God. And the reference to that was Romans 12 and 12. Is, is God please 
with what you post. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Romans 12 and 2. 12 and 2. I'm sorry. Romans 12 and 2. But God is God. That's another question you got to ask yourself as you are going into this next quarter. Like I know we're already in the midst of quarter two and we are preparing because quarter two ends in June, guys. Mm -hmm. Quarter three is going to jump off July 1st. So really, you utilizing this month and a half as you prepare for quarter three, like is your content authentic to who God called you to be? Is God pleased with what you're posting? Those are two, two points to really consider. And that's just from day one. And we didn't even hit everybody with that. Yeah. So at the end of day one, there was a, um, a war show. And the war show was all black attire. And so that, that was another awesome part of the event, having those evening activities to kind of bring everybody together, give a different flow of that evening gown, that dress up red carpet thing. So that was awesome. Um, so we're going to shift gears now to day two. So with day two, we had uh, another question come up. And that question, I don't know who responded to it, but the question is, how do you stay online Stay focused online as a content creator. And honestly, it was two to three points that we want to highlight there. Stay in focus. Don't wait for validation. God's validation is what matters. Ignore anything that stops the conversation and engage in things that help to grow the conversation. And so that really hit me, you know, just to kind of add a personal point, because with our podcast, for those who have been rocking with us since we started October 2019, that has been one of those things for us where we will see a trend, and we just mentioned that, we would have personal life, and then we would just flat out not know what to say. Yeah. And, and so it will put us in a stagnated space where what do we put out? What do we say? And I just thank God. I have to just thank God right now because I just feel a fresh wind. Mm -hmm. I feel a fresh wind. And so I just want to, we just want to encourage you guys that it could be a conference. It could be a book. It could be this podcast episode specifically. You need a fresh wind from God, a fresh idea from him to help to push you to that next level. It's not uncommon to get in a place of, I don't know, because we are not like God in the sense of like, we don't think like him. So that's why we have to ask him to download to us what to think, what to say, because flesh can be on display. And, and what I mean by that, to keep it short, is we don't always have the the, the popping ideal, if you will. But if we seek God for direction, for the words, for the outline, it'll flow. Mm -hmm. And I think that everybody who's listening can really relate that. It's one thing when you got it down pat and you, you feel in your flow. You're like, yes, I got this. And then you also know those times where it's like, I'm literally pulling <laughs> at air trying to figure out what to do, what to say, et cetera. I like that. Um, yeah, I, I think that was, God knows we had so much out of this, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, that one, that one was, that one was key because of the whole validation and trends. It's very easy to get caught up. And we've seen a lot of that. We've been partakers of that. Yes. And this conference just put a spotlight on us to say, you know, I'm going to use three T's. Mm -hmm. First, we got trend. Yeah. But forget trend. We need to be transparent. Be transparent with discernment. Mm -hmm. And then we can be transformational. All right. So don't worry about the trends. Be more concerned with the transformation of God's people. Yes. And you do that through transparency and sharing your knowledge and sharing whatever God puts on your heart and leads you in that direction. Mm -hmm. So let God lead your podcast, not the trends. Let God lead your reels. Let God lead your 
YouTube channel, or whatever your influence, whatever is. your influence is, we we just breaking it down because we want y'all to know, no matter what method, the mission has to be Christ. Mm -hmm. That's it. No matter your method, your mission has to be Christ. So I think that's a really good point. You got another point you want to share? Um. So. He's trying to look through the notes, guys. Yeah, give me one second. I'm just I think that this this conference overall was was what we prayed for. We prayed for this conference. We prayed for a key. Hallelujah, Jesus. We prayed for a door. And so I think that when you pray for something that puts an expectancy in the atmosphere, just like the woman with the issue of blood, Right, she was dealing with a a issue, a health issue, and she actually went to the physicians for help. But if you read the text, and we'll put the text in the description below for the show notes. But when you read the text and you see how the woman with the issue of blood did what we normally do, we go to the doctor, we go, you know, to Walgreens, we go to CVS, we try to do all these things to help ourselves. But there was a there was a point in her story where she finally said, I'm expecting a healing for real. And the only person I know that can do it for me is is God. And so that's the place that Quentin and I found ourselves in. We have an expectancy that this podcast is one of the methods that we truly believe God has given us. And we went to this conference with an expectancy for a game plan and expectancy for that fresh wind that that new idea that new strategy and so we just take a moment in this episode to say thank you jesus for your touch your virtue mm -hmm. touching resilient love your virtue touching this microphone your virtue wor working through us in the name of jesus I'll share that last one that I just saw. Um, I'm sorry, but it's so many. Um, I really got to look through these notes. <laughs> but um, one of the questions was, uh, how should people share with their audience and how much to share and what not to share? I know that's kind of a tricky question, but um, essentially one of the answers was, I, and I felt like this was, the drop the mic answer, and I cannot remember who said it. It was basically, are you sharing wounds or scars? Mm -hmm. If it's wounds. I believe that was Sierra. I think so. Yeah. If it's wounds, you will bleed on people because you, you will infect others from the scars, from the wound. But the scars mean you are healed. Correct. And that helps you to influence rather than to infect. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And it's a it's I know on the panel, it was a very tricky question, a tricky place, because sometimes that you. Through discernment, let me put it that put a point in that, like through the discernment, you can share. um in a way when you're in your healing process with discernment but you you got to be very mindful with that one mm -hmm. um so i just felt like that was very key um even that state you know that response was just like you know be mindful of what you're posting be mindful of what you're sharing you know be transparent but use wisdom yeah and right. still be authentic. You can you can still be authentic while doing that. You don't have to put on this facade. It's like this Christian thing where I can't, I can't, mm, you know, I can't do all that. So kiss my wife, and I, you know, just being affectionate in public or just certain stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just um, use wisdom, use wisdom, use discernment, and um, don't bleed on the people. Right. Don't right. lead on your audience. Transparency can heal, but transparency could also hurt if done out of timing. Mm -hmm. And so there's a time and place. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 
and there's a time and place for everything under the heavens. And so just being mindful of what, when is the right time to tell the story of blank. Mm -hmm. And there are moments where that story will not re be released at all. It's just a moment between you and the Lord to heal and get delivered and get set free. It doesn't even have to leave your bedroom. It's between you. But if God puts it on your heart to share, just know it's for his glory and he'll get the glory out of your story. Okay. And, and be mindful when it involves other people. Be That's very, good. Be very sensitive to the nature of what you share when it deals with people, people you love, people you care about, your family members. Lord knows people you live with. Hello. So after, you know, after you post it, you got to live with them. So that's right. <laughs> Not us. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So I think that that kind of hits. Uh, and then, excuse me, day two closed out with a worship service. Um, and so that was just, whoo, you know, so overall, the two days in Austell, Georgia with the BCI conference, as you guys can hear, as you guys can just tell. We truly enjoyed ourselves and God met us there and he did exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask, think, or imagine. So with that being said, just to kind of give you guys some closing comments, um, some reoccurring themes that we heard were seeking Christ, being very prayerful, using discernment, not putting self on display and just being conscious like being conscious, not in an insecure manner, mm -hmm. but being conscious of the Holy Spirit and just what God wants you to do. Um, and having conscious content. Okay. So, and then um, bottom line, speaking with authenticity, you know, being really transparent, but also using that discernment. So I think that, like I said, that was a really major reoccurring thing. Yeah. Some other key points we want to share with you guys is who did we see? Because we, there was a long list. I mean, Jackie pulled out the hits with this one. Dr. Jackie. Dr. Jackie. She pulled out a lot of stops. I mean, we're going to have to tag the link for you guys to see who was on the roster. But some personal key points we want to share with people is every day with HK. Um, I follow them, have been following them, been following their story. Um, they had their first child together and just some other family dynamics that they have shared on their platform has just been an encouragement to me in the space of being a Christian married woman, uh, specifically black woman too. You know, this is a black couple. And so just seeing them, and being able to take a picture with them. And and just to note for the simple fact, and I, Lord knows they are some, you can tell some people's spirit. Like you see them on social media, social yeah. media or YouTube or whatever, and then you see them in person. It's like, okay, it match. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I, um, I think it's just, it's key that, okay, they're real people. You know, sometimes we get on social media and we forget. These are real people. They going through real <laughs> problems, and they 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 live life just like that. And they they have a real success because these are all real things real that happening. Things. Um, but like he said, that was a good point. Just to be able to say, like, oh my gosh, like hi, you know, it's not just a click of a like. Like I'm able to hug you and say hello. Uh, so I appreciate that moment. Uh, we also met some other people. Um, Lish speaks. Uh, she has her own podcast, Atlanta based podcast. So check her out. We're going to tag her link and also beautifully urban boutique. Uh, so definitely check all three of those links out. Mm -hmm. And we will also be tagging um, BCI black Christian influencers for you all to follow, follow, follow um, Two community based um, organizations that we want to highlight. There were a lot. She had a lot of sponsors, yeah. but we wanted to specifically highlight two for this yeah. episode. And the one that we're going for first, we're going to shout out is 10 by 10. We're going to tag them as well. 10 by 10 is an organization focused on helping to bridge the gap with the youth and the church. Um, we're going to do it within a 10 year time span to bring them back. 
so that we will not lose our youth to the enemy's plot and plan and honestly the streets. So if you want to get on board with this, if you have a youth ministry and you're looking for more materials to help your youth ministry, we want you to check out 10 by 10. 10. Yeah. And um, going into the next one, um, definitely love 10 by 10. I love the mission statement. I think we need more. We need more of those types of initiatives, right. but also we don't need to create so many initiatives. We need to support this initiative Come on. before we jump on the, you know, we don't need a million more churches. Let's support, get behind a few churches Come on. to do more. That's right. So um, the next one was the hope booth. For me, this one, like, I heard the story. Mm -hmm. I automatic like immediately connected with it. Um, just looking at it futuristic and what hope booth is is basically everybody remembers the phone booths. You barely see them now, of course. I don't think there's many at Not all. Not many, right? Um, so what this is is a booth to replace the phone booth. Mm -hmm. But here's the twist. There's a beautiful twist in it called mental health awareness. Mm -hmm. Basically, this booth does a mental health check. And you can chime in at any moment. Mm -hmm. um, it does a mental health check to check to see where you are, where your mindset is like. Yep. It's a three minute interactive mm -hmm. um, questionnaire and it is tailored like based upon your answers the response at the end is tailored to speak to your situation and provide the resources and provide need. the resources you need to answer the concern that you may have. Um, or just honestly, just a, a moment to encourage your spirit, man. Mm -hmm. Um, so that is essentially what the hope booth is about. And of course it has way more to it than that, yeah. but that is just our personal perspective on it. And, um, the mission now is to build more booths so that they can be in multiple places. And so uh, we're going to leave their donation link in our show notes so that you all can donate, support, learn more, follow yeah. them and all of that. And when you think about the Hope Booth also, just think about it's so innovative Yeah, to our time of technology. Mm-hmm. And in the midst of us having so much technology, we also are still having a high rise of mental health issues. Yeah. A high rise of homelessness. Mm -hmm. And just to zone in, those homeless people could have an opportunity to get help that they need. That's that's so innovative. I mean, I love it. I love it because I've worked in an environment where I've seen mental health not being treated on a daily basis before. So I know how valuable this is. Yes. Yes. So, um, there are many more sponsors that were at the, at the conference and we do not take it lightly for their donation and support to BCI. However, for our episode purposes, we did want to highlight those two. Um, the next one, I think there was another one called and, um, but we'll tag it in mm -hmm. our show notes. Okay. Because that organization focuses on social justice, social justice, and also helping with the word of God as well. Mm -hmm. um, but let's get into um, some of our closing remarks, because um, there was something that Quentin had an epiphany about. And I want him to share with you guys his ep epiphany before we close it. You want me to share that now? Share oh, it now. Man, I don't even want to share it. Uh-huh. So... Um, we're at the conference. It's during a break. We're out. We had lunch. There were like some food, food trucks. trucks provided. Really good food. We had some jerk chicken. Yep. Um, can't remember the name of the company, but we might tag that one so you can get some. But um, yeah. <laughs> had getting our food. I don't know if it was in the midst of me being really hungry or just ready to eat, sit down, just rejuvenate you don't got all this good information and now you just you got to replenish <laughs> so i spoke to a gentleman 
mm-hmm. that was walking up. And I was like, man, you know, I just said, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, man, in, in the back of my mind, I'm like, he really looks familiar. And I'm like, I, I don't, you know, sometimes you don't want to say it because you don't want to mess up. Like, uh, uh, they might, it might be an awkward interaction. So I don't say it. I think Bree had kind of realized it, but she was not 100% sure. Mm-hmm. But she knew it was a speaker. Yeah, that's all I kept saying. That's a speaker. That's a speaker. And I'm like, this person looks familiar, but I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe so. So um, nevertheless, guess who it was? Dun, 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 dun. The motivational speaker, Jeremy Anderson. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> <laughs> For those that don't know. The motivational speaker Jeremy Anderson. I don't you might be hiding under a rock or something, but this man is very influential. I have followed his um Instagram, been seeing him on Instagram for maybe a year or two, like really a lot. Um, mm-hmm. even considered looking at some of that just for myself, but I'm just like, man, I have watched this person, looked at the person, and then got right in front of the person and couldn't couldn't get it. <laughs> And so if Jeremy Anderson sees this or somebody know Jeremy Anderson, tell him I'm so sorry, man. I I really I, I can't believe I didn't realize that was you. It's okay. Yeah. It's but okay. that's just a lesson to say, um, take action. Take action. Um, don't worry about feeling like it's awkward. Just just take action. Um, you never know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we miss opportunities or just miss opportunities to speak and, and say, hey, I really support your work or I love what you're doing. Not that I'm trying to get a photo op, just I really respect what you're doing, love your work. And, you know, just to help that, you know, even though they're at a certain level, it just feels good to know. to know someone's supporting you that you don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That's good. And I'm glad he shared it because there are moments where you're in that room that you've been asking for and praying for and that moment comes. And for whatever reason, it just doesn't line up. But just to know we were in the room, that means God can do it again. So even though he shared it for y'all, I just want to encourage him. (laughs) You were in the room before and you can be in the room again. Again. Um, so with that being said, everybody, listen, we enjoy sharing with you guys about the Black Christian Influencers Conference. And after you listen to this episode, we want you to leave us a five-star review. DM us, send us a message, either on Facebook or Instagram. We also have TikTok, so if you want to hit us up there too, you can. If you're watching this, this is on YouTube, yep. so please be sure to watch it um, because you would have saw me get up in the beginning and go get my charger. But anyway, we enjoy, enjoy, enjoy sharing this with you guys. Real transparency. (laughs) Real transparency. So we enjoy sharing with you guys. We hope that you enjoy this episode and future episodes coming up. We're going to be hitting the topic of marriage and mental health, sharing with you some of our books that we are reading, and make sure you follow us on Instagram because we're going to be doing some road trip conversations. That's like our thing. Yeah. Like, so please, our next road trip is literally coming up Saturday. So we want you all to join us for road trip conversations. They get juicy and sometimes it leads right to this podcast. (laughs) So with that being said, this has been another episode of Present Love. Love. See ya. See ya.